Welcome to AH University, brought to you by Aggressive Hydraulics. In this presentation, Tony Casasa, the engineering manager at Aggressive Hydraulics, will help you understand the essentials of hydraulic cylinder sizing. This five-part series will delve into the primary aspects, including direction, force, distance, speed, and power. This video is the first segment of the series, focusing on direction. Let's get started. So when we talk about direction, we're talking about if the cylinder is going to see a compressive load or a tensile load. So a compressive node may also be known as under load on extend or the load is when it's pushing. In contrast, a tensile load is when the cylinder is retracting or when it's pulling. Uh, in some cases, the cylinder is under load in both directions. And sometimes that may be a constant load in both directions, and other times it may be when the load goes over center. So at its most basic, a compressive load, we can envision a cylinder that's mounted vertically with the rod up and a load on the end of the rod. And due to the weight of gravity, that load's trying to come down. And so when the cylinder extends, it's pushing that uh, load and raising it up in the air. So one real life application example of this is a freight elevator and there's a cylinder on the side. Uh, when the cylinder extends, it pushes up the freight elevator as well as any load that's on the elevator. And this one happens to be single acting. So then when the oil out of the cylinder is vented back to tank, gravity allows the cylinder to lower. So very simple, very straightforward, uh, extending, pushing against gravity. Uh, and then gravity causes it to retract. Another example of a compressive load, in this one case you can't see the cylinder, it's inside of this waste compactor, but it's mounted horizontally. And when it extends, it compacts the garbage or the recycled material, uh, and then retract. It has very little work it needs to do, very light force, but just bringing that plate or platen back to the home position so it can be ready to compress again. So in this case, it's still a compressive load or under load and extend primarily, uh, but it's horizontal instead of vertical. Another example of a compressive load, we see the boom hoist cylinder on the crane. Uh, as it extends, it causes that boom to pivot and lifting the boom and any load that would be on the hook up into the air. This one's a little bit different. It was a little more complex. There's three pivot points, uh, two for the cylinder, um, and then one more at the very base of the boom. And the load on the cylinder actually depends on the angle between the cylinder and the boom. And so it's changing as the cylinder and the boom go through their stroke and that boom swings an arc. This is a little bit different too because a good portion of the cylinder force, we could call it wasted uh, because it's not directly pushing on the load, it's pushing at an angle. It's actually trying to rip the, the boom off that pin at the heel, uh, and only a portion of the output force of the cylinder is going into lifting the load and doing work against gravity. But uh, it's still valuable because the straight lift's just not feasible with an application like that. You can't build a crane to, to always be lifting straight up against the load, um, so it works. So there we have our, our triangle and our angle, uh, and then we can use some trigonometry to figure out what the force requirement is. So that's compressive load, tensile load, so under load and retract or pulling. Uh, if we take our simple example and we flip it around, so now the rod's facing down and we have a weight attached to the rod. So when pressure acts on the annulus or donut shaped area of the piston, it causes the cylinder to retract and pull that load up against gravity. Uh, real life example of this is on a spike puller on a rail maintenance equipment. Uh, so the cylinder up at the top there poking up uh, that's rod down. And so this machine grabs onto the spikes, which are just like large nails and the spike puller cylinder retracts and extracts the spike from the tie and from the plate. 
Uh, when the cylinder extends, it does very little work. It's just returning to pull another spike. So here we have an example of a bi-directional load. So in this machine, the tracks can be extended out for a wide lifting base or retracted in for transport or for getting into tight spaces. And there are cylinders that are mounted horizontally that adjust that track width. And here we have a constant load both directions. Doesn't matter if the tracks are being widened or made more narrow, if the cylinder is extending or retracting, basically the load is the same in both directions. Now the load may be different. If it's on concrete, it's gonna be different than it is if it's on gravel or on another surface. Uh, if the machine is heavier, uh, the load's gonna be higher. So there are some variations, but in general, it's a constant load. As contrasted, uh, with this machine, we have cylinders that have a load in both direction, but not always the same time. So in this bucket, uh, uh, bucket mounted aerial lift machine, the main boom, which is at an angle now, will go up until it's vertical. And then the upper stage of the boom, the cylinder will cause it to extend. So the cylinder is extending and the boom's going up until it reaches vertical and then it actually goes over center and goes to the other side of the boom and now the cylinder is working in retract. The boom is causing a tensile load to be on the cylinder. Uh, this allows the, the man in the bucket to work on both sides of the power line without repositioning the truck or the main boom, uh, but it is an extra challenge for the cylinder with that transition from being a compressive load to a tensile load. This concludes part one. Be sure to check out the remaining videos linked below. Visit aggressivehydraulics.com and try our custom online apps, including our hydraulic cylinder calculators and quoting applications. Contact us today to start your purpose-built process.